beer's not even in it today. I know it's not. Jesus Christ. Oh. Welcome to the spoiler cast. Korra, book, uh, The Legend of Korra. The Book of Korra. The Legend of Korra, Korra. Book 4. Episode 11, Kuvira's Gambit. Kuvira's Gambit. Um, yeah. This so, episode, Jesus Christ. I've run out of evens to can't. <laughs> um, so now, there's a giant mech involved. Yeah, this thing went full Evangelion. <laughs> you know, it went partial Evangelion back in Season 2 with the giant spirit monsters. Right. But now that it has a 25-story mech suit that fires a pink laser, it's full Evo. It's full on, yeah. It's full on Evo now. And it goes... <laughs> oh, man. This is crazy. Stuff is getting crazy, man. Yeah. Um, I Honestly... It, it's it's terrifying that they built that thing, and then they basically had Varric and Julie working on that railgun, basically just to iron out the kinks while they're building apparently a giant robot somewhere a, else. A giant twenty five story robot that's controlled story. by metal bending. Yeah, which it had is like awesome. all these little metal spheres and these panels that she was just spinning to move it. Love that! I love that design. No, it's definitely one of those. You know, when I first saw it, I was like, okay, cool, big mech suit, okay. And then it's like, oh, well, she's controlling it by metal bending. It's pretty badass. Well, and the thing is, you're like, oh, wow. And then once you see it up against, like, buildings and mm. armies, you're like, oh, wow. Then that thing is huge. It's sniping across the city, just standing there. Right. And she captures the Republic City and the United Republics. They have to surrender because what can they possibly do? Exactly. They're just going to, you know, she destroy atta- everything if yeah. they don't. She, so. she attacks a week early. They thought they were prepared. Nobody was prepared. Mm-hmm. Even General Iroh showing up with all his forces basically amounted to nothing. All right. I will say uh, Prince Wu did uh, show some good colors as a leader, uh, yeah. getting people to not panic and evacuate the city. He showed that what we've always known is that he's a good talker. Mm-hmm. He doesn't as he don't doesn't always make the best decisions, mm-hmm. but he's definitely a good talker. He knows how to talk to people, which Mako never has known how to do. Right, Michael was trying to tell people how to how to um, yeah ex- precisely how to evacuate. <laughs> evacuate, and everybody's got scared. to protocol. Yeah. <laughs> they got scared and confused. He's like, I'm giving such detailed. Uh, how can people not understand what uh, they're supposed to be doing? Yeah, it was the whole episode. Basically, was just like a nonstop, you know, kind of like scramble, like a mad mm. scramble. Everybody was trying to do plots. You know, Team Avatar tried to disable the. Mecha, or go out and disable the weapon in advance, not knowing it was the Mecha. Mm-hmm. And then they got there and almost got shot out of the air. Right. And that was that was intense. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, the thing that everybody is going to be talking about for this episode is mm-hmm. what gave the episode the name Kuvira's Gambit, mm-hmm. which was the end, right. the, the very last scene. Uh, the team, the Avatar, and the Airbender is captured. Avatar Junior trying to you, we will use him as leverage to get her to you know, back off the city and leave, mm. saying that you know you'll never see him again if you don't. And Kuvira does not uh, react to threats very well. No, uh, obviously not. She tracked down the radio signal and then decided to nuke the building they were in, including her fiance. And, you know, we thought she was pretty cold, but we always thought she was, like, doing it for the betterment of people. Mm. Yeah, uh, not anymore. No, she's just, she's just full-on batshit crazy. She, no, she just, all she cares <laughs> about is power. Right. You know, there's no other pretenses here. She's not doing this to make it a better world for everybody to live in. She's doing this to make it a world that, make it her world that everybody has to live in. Right. Like, the, the pretense has been dropped. Mm. And there was a lot of imagery here, kind of like going back to like almost like World War One, with like pits and the barbed wires and the trenches, mm. and yeah, it really it gave up the vibe. And she was giving this speech to people, and I'm sitting there like, man, well, how how could people follow her when it's very it's so obvious that she's like genocidal almost, right? And then of course I'm like, well, I'd rather be behind the gun than in front of it, right? And it's like it's you know like when they were talking about. Uh... Um, evacuating the city, they, 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 it was you know it wasn't mandatory evacuation. They said they only evacuated eighteen families. Yeah, the voluntary evacuation mm. got eighteen families out. Yeah, because like, the Republic City didn't think they were in danger. They really genuinely didn't think so. I thought it was interesting. Kuvira wanted to take the United Republics for the same reason the Earth Queen wanted them back. Mm. Like if she's evolved into that that character that originally she didn't like at all. Like. 
she was very much, you know, along with Sue's whole anti-monarchy thing mm. in the beginning. And now she's become the queen and then some. Right. Like, she's become just like the thing she hated and now worse, even. Right. And we have no idea who's, who has survived the blast, if everyone's going to survive the blast. Yeah. I really think since this is the last book, it'd be interesting to see them have people not make it. Yeah, I... I'm afraid for casualties, given mm. that the finale is coming up on the 19th. Right. Like, I'm, I'm worried for Julie, mm. I'm worried for Varric, mm. Mako and or Bolin, I f- mm. and Asami. I think Bolin is, is, prime ca- is prime candidate for someone to lose. Yeah. Look at, like, Wash from Firefly. Well, oh, and then the entire Beifong family's there, like mm. Suyin and all of our kids. Yeah. Uh, the twins, I'm worried, I'd be worried about losing, you know, having a we- uh, Fred and George Weasley syndrome with those twins. <laughs> uh, Opal. Yeah, Opal's there. Kai's there. Mm. All the Airbender kids were there. So, I mean, it, it's there's a lot of people in that building, and I am extremely nervous right now. Yeah. Because they've proven in the past that they're not afraid to have things happen. Mm-hmm. But and they were also hiding out in an area that had spirit vines. That's true. So I'm wondering if maybe the spirits wouldn't shield them from a spirit blast. Or something like that. Because we, well, we did see, you know, uh, Korra talking to the spirits and having them not respond. Yeah. Well, or they, not refusing to fight. Yeah, they, they viewed her the same as they viewed uh, Tarlock. Mm-hmm. Or Unalak. God, Unalak, there were so yeah. many locks in the first two seasons. <laughs> There was Noah Talk and there was Tarlock. Those were the first two. Those in the first season, right. and then there was Unalak. So yeah, they saw her as another Unalak. They just wanted to use the spirits to fight her battle. Now, and I don't think they quite understand or grasp exactly what is happening. But I think this giant mecha might shake the spirits into action again. Right. You know, and to the point in the past where they were, you know, very aggressive. Mm. So I'm just I'm wondering if they won't maybe understand now that Korra wasn't trying to use them, but rather get sure. them get them to defend themselves as right. well as the people that were co- you know, cohabitating with them. Mm. And you know, well, really the spirit wilds have been yeah. attacked, maybe they'll see that. Yeah, really understanding that you know, the, for this there, there to be balance, it means there has to be, you know, give and take on both sides. Mm. And that you can't just expect help and then not give it in return. Right. So I'm hoping you know we'll see like some of that hot spirit action. Mm. I'm I this is I'm you know stupid like this. I want to see another lion turtle again. <laughs> another lion turtle. Like a lion turtle like that's like been living in the swamp like Toph riding on the lion turtle in the battle. <laughs> the, the tree rises out of the ground and reveals that it's actually on the back of the lion turtle. A giant lion turtle that would be interesting. But I have a feeling they maybe aren't gonna they aren't gonna go that far. No, that's, I'm, I'm sure they're not. But. It looks like all the hummingbirds got destroyed, too, mm. which is sad, because we never got to see them in action. Right. Very sad. There'll probably be one left, and then Julie will get in it, and then she'll go kamikaze. And be badass. Be a badass. Yeah. It's good to see Julie back. Yeah, her and Varric had a moment that he ruined completely. Mm. We'll see something, I'm sure, in the, in the two-part for Yeah, that. I mean, she gave this it. amazing, heartfelt apology, letting Varric know that she, you know, he means the world to her, mm. and then he's like, apology accepted, now get back to work! And she's like, no, I am not your assistant, I am your equal, and like, she bent his ass over backwards. <laughs> so, that was kind of funny. Varric is very flexible. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was doing like a full limbo. <laughs> But yeah, like it's every everyone's up for, you know. There's there's a lot of open ended stuff that needs to be fulfilled in the in the finale between people. Yeah, and it'll be sad to see if any of those people, you know, on their deathbed yeah. make up for that. You know what I mean? Well, I'm, I'm worried about us. I'm worried about certain characters that kind of had their character arcs wrapped up, like mm. like Asami. Mm. She reconciled with her father. Right. That makes her expendable. Mm. <laughs> like. Oh, Bolin and you know. Um, all four back, all back together. back together. That makes yeah. them expendable. Exactly. Like, you Julie know, and Varric, they're I'm, still at tension, so I don't see I'm nine times, I'm 99% sure Batar Jr. is gone. Yeah. Because he, he refused to go back to his family. That's true. So that's kind of wrapped up. He chose Kuvira, and then she murdered him for his loyalty. Right, so he'll probably be gone. Yeah, I have a feeling that that's going to be the, 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 the cost, mm-hmm. the toll. And then, you know, Su Yin and her family, or what's left of them, are going to have to mourn their son, knowing mm. that he basically re- refused them in his mm. last moments. Right. And that Su Yin's going to carry that guilt with her the rest of her life. Because mm. she's like, I don't know what I did to hurt you, but I'm really, I'm sorry. 
Mm. You know, please just come back. Our family misses you. We haven't been the same without you. Right. Like, it was really emotional. And then he kind of just said, Kuvira is my family. And then he got vaporized by a pink laser. <laughs> oh, wait, you think he's gotten vaporized? This yeah, is all speculation. If but... he lives, I feel he's not going to be uh, engaged to Kuvira anymore. I feel like, no. I feel like the way yeah. he's off. So I would like to see him come back and be the reason Kavira loses. That would be great that he just had, the last you know the last like ditch effort like just something he, happens. Him, Varric, and Julie start like a, a covert engineer squad that just goes in and dismantles everything. Mm. I don't know. I it just you know and it's hard to predict because this show doesn't go the way other shows do. Right. It's hard. It's very hard to predict exactly what's going to happen. Mm. So I mean, typically he would be a casualty. And a few others might be, but they might, you know, again, they might not be any casualties because there might be some sort of other force we don't know at work. Right. So, it's hard to say, but uh, the finale is so close, and mm. I can't wait for it, but I also don't want it to ever get here. Right, because you don't want it to end. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very tough to be in a spot where one of my favorite shows probably of all time is now definitely coming to an You're end. Wrapping up. And, like, the greater story of the two shows mm. is ending. And they said they'll be continuing stories and comics like they have been with the first series, but it's not the same. Right. It's just not the same. You don't get the music and all, you know, the voice, the great voice acting and the dialogue. Mm-hmm. So, it's kind of, it's sad, but at the same time, it's been really exciting. Right. And it's, it's one of those things, like, it's just hard to explain. Like, it is one of those... I don't think it's hit me yet that it's going to be done, that they're not going to do anything else. You know what I mean? Like, right, because we got these two seasons so close together. Mm-hmm. It hasn't felt like there's been a break, really, from right. it. Right. So. It feels like it's all been one huge, long season. Yeah, which is kind of cool, but... Mm. I would, you know, part of me wishes they had held off until, like, until at least 2015. Right. Give us a little breathing room. At least they didn't dump them all at once and we could just power yeah. watch them. I mean, Book is already on Blu-ray. I already own the Blu-ray from yeah. Book 3. And I literally just finished watching it like three months ago. Right. So that's kind of a weird feeling. But I'm going to be going through and rewatching all the first three seasons before we get to the finale. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of get myself mentally prepared. Looking for any of the kind of those, like, you know, little symmetries. Little and things you forgot about. Or... Yeah, because, they, they, you know, when you bookend, especially, the you know, the front of the first season and the back of the season, there's going to be some things that are going to be kind of like bookends or mm. they're going to be symmetrical. Right. To kind of, you know, bring the story full circle. And it's interesting. You know, the first episode, if you watched the first episode of Korra, it was so lighthearted and tame. Like, mm. the worst thing that happened was she got arrested. Right. It's like... Because she beat up some triads, and you're mm-hmm. like, you know, I was watching it, and I'm like, God, this is just so happy. Right. Like, it's so lighthearted. No, there's no, not any real stakes yet. You know, they barely had introduced Amon, mm-hmm. even. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens here that's going to kind of call back to the beginning of the first season, even. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if, you know, President Raiko will figure in somehow in that, you know, at first he used Kuvira base or Kuvira Cora as like a political tool, mm. and if that's not going to come around, and you know, maybe he's going to redeem himself because you know he's always kind of treated Cora shabbily, right? Like uh, just a tool to be used, and then thrown in the shed when he didn't want it around mm. anymore. Well, he was pretty quick to surrender so people wouldn't die. So. Yeah, well, that that was very admir- admirable mm. that he had enough. He had enough, you know. Pride not to fight. Like, right. he knew that all he was going to do was doom thousands of people mm. to their death because there's no way they can fight that machine right now. They just right. don't have the understanding of how it even works. Right. Which is why Korra's plan against Batar Jr. was the best plan. Because mm-hmm. he built it. You know, in theory, he designed it. Mm. So if they could have worked him over. See, that's why I don't think he's vaporized. I think he's going to be like, She sold me out. Here's how you take it down. I don't know. I. I th- I think that there's, that's... Even in his dying breath. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, f- I feel like he's probably gone. And then I think, like, this is going to be Varric or Julie's big moment. Mm. Is going to be getting at that thing and figuring it out. Because mm. this is a, this is a two-part finale. I bet you the first part will be taking down the mech, the giant mech. And the second part will take, be taking down Kavira. Yeah. Which well, shouldn't be that hard now for Korra. Mm-hmm. I don't think she's going to be holding back like she right. was before. Mm-hmm. You know, before she still had a lot of issues, but she was also not trying to harm Kuvira. Right. She was just trying to play peacemaker. 
Mm. I don't think she's going to have that hang up anymore. Right. I think honestly, taking down Kuvira is going to be pretty easy. Mm. You know, I don't and I don't want to sell Kuvira short, but I think when it comes down to an actual bending battle between her and the Avatar back at 100% or even better. Well, the thing that I get, I remember is at the end of the last series of Avatar the Last Airbender their final fight between the Fire Lord and, and Aang was just ridiculous. Yeah, but that was also because Zozin's Comet enhanced his right. firebending to right. Avatar levels. No, that's very true. But he still lost once Aang started using all the elements and went to the Avatar state. Right. And he hadn't been able to all season because of the stuff with Azula, the right. lightning. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of hoping we get something huge yeah. and big. Like, even if it's her and the Avatar state versus the giant yeah. Mechazoo. You that know, that would be like, exciting too. But yeah, I think you know they've kind of always pointed out every season they've always held it true that once you go into the Avatar state, it's basically like cheat code enabled, mm-hmm. like that it's over. Any fight if you're in the Avatar state, it's pretty much over. Mm-hmm. You know, the only way you can beat them if they're in the Avatar state is if you have them compromised another way, like Zaheer had her poisoned, mm-hmm. and so she was trying to not be in the Avatar state actively, right. and so she wasn't fighting at her full strength or had her mind right. focused. So, I think we're going to see that that mech suit is mm. going to be the biggest thing because it's just such a big unknown. Right. But once it comes down to actually just Kuvira the person, it's not going to be that much of a fight. Right. And if anything, Korra might end up having to protect her from other people that want to end her. Right. Like Korra might play, play that unpopular peacemaker role again, that we're not taking her life. You know, mm. she's going to stand trial for her crimes and we're, she'll be an example. Right. That, you know, again, that you take the world out of balance, that's what happens. Right. Just like you know, here was made an example of, mm-hmm. and actually came around. And some people, I guess, didn't like that. Like, they didn't like the idea that the man that had attacked her ended up being the one that helped her. Like, mm-hmm. they thought that that made Korra weaker or sold her short. But I'm not sure if I agree with that. Mm-hmm. But I've also never been attacked to the point where I was suffering from any kind of post-stress disorder. Right. So I don't have a valid, uh, you know, starting point on that issue even. Mm-hmm. But I didn't I didn't think Zaheer helping her made Korra any weaker or didn't diminish her journey. I think, if anything, it showed how big of a person she is. Mm-hmm. That she's willing to look her attacker in the face and not back down. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Zaheer was... He was an anarchist, you know what I mean? He wanted... He wanted no no leadership. He wanted nothing, but he was also spiritually like a, a spiritual monk of high fortitude that could, you yeah. know, got to a point where he could leave everything behind enough that he could fly. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Well, and I I wonder how much of it wasn't just that he was also an anarchist, but he was also kind of you know not necessarily a pacifist, but. Mm-hmm. That he wasn't very into violence, and that he only used it really as a last resort. Mm-hmm. Because it seems like he, as much as you know, he liked the natural state. It was he seemed to he didn't really embrace the natural state as we understand the strongest survive and the weakest die off. Mm-hmm. He just wanted people to be able to be free to live their lives mm-hmm. without anyone telling them what to do. Right. So it was he was it was a complicated character, mm-hmm. but I can definitely understand why people would say that it's not you know great that a guy that uh, attacked Cora ended up being the one that. Helped her, you know, kind of get past her mental blocks. Right. But, you know, I thought it was a compelling story choice. Mm. And I can't comment on how true to life that would be. Right. Neither can I, so. But I I think this this whole journey has really been interesting in that I think what we've seen Cora go through mm. and the maturity she's really gained is interesting. Especially watching the first season, man. Like, watching that and seeing just how she behaved. And it's like, you forget it's been such a nice gradual change. Mm-hmm. That you really kind of forget, you're like, wow, she really was kind of a brat when mm. she first started. Well, yeah, she definitely was. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how her journey is going to come to an end here. Mm. I hope that, and I hope that doesn't mean literally comes to, to an end. end. Right. Just figuratively, this is that where the story leaves her when we end. You know mm-hmm. where she goes. I'm curious if they're going to do like the first like part, like maybe two thirds of the finale will be the battle and the victory, and the last there will be like. You know, ten, twenty years later, kind yeah. of reflecting and seeing Something where like cool. seeing where everybody's gone. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people didn't like it when Harry Potter did that, but I did. I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. You know, 
mm-hmm. having Harry and Hermione and Ron and Ginny and even Malfoy all there at the station with their kids and mm-hmm. instead of for them to go their first year at Hogwarts or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm a total sucker for that kind of stuff. And I mean, I, I'm I'm a fan of that. I would rather have it be that than the end of The Sopranos. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's I just like going, that. Yeah, it's going it's to just stop and we don't know what's going to happen. I like that ending too though. So it's mm-hmm. like, I like that ending because it was, it was like Schrodinger's cat. Mm. You don't you know you don't know if it's alive or dead. Right. It's it's both. Right. I love that ending. I'm more I just don't want it to be an ending like we saw with like Dexter mm. or you know, Lost shows that didn't hit the like didn't nail the landing. Mm. That you know they, Well, because I would be I I'll be honest, I'd be mad if if this ended and they beat Kavira and it was like, Yay, everything's fine, we saved the day. All right. The and end. then credits, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, wait, what? What happened to all these people that we've been on a journey with for four years? Yeah. You know what I mean? I like, mean, Last Airbender kind of ended like that, but they gave us the kiss at the end, so we knew kind of what was going to happen in mm, the future. They gave right. us that little bit, and it was very dramatic. Mm. But, you know, I like the idea of all of them just hanging out at Iroh's tea house. Mm. Just enjoying life for the first time in a couple years. Yeah. Just being able to relax and enjoy just being alive. Right. So that was nice. And they didn't, didn't need to give us more. And this mm. doesn't really need to either. But I would like to see. I would love to see just because that's who I am, how I am. Right. Like the you know years later stuff. Oh yeah, definitely. But I think that'll wrap it up for now. Yep. <laughs> We've kind of gone a field of the main episode plot. Mm-hmm. But we're you know we're cranking up to the finale here. So yeah, definitely. We're all very we're all excited. I'm mm. sure you are too if you're listening to this. So I want to hear though. I want to hear your theories. I want to hear your fan theories. Who do you think sur- do you think anyone survived that? Who do you think survived? Obviously, Cora survived, but right. did, what about Pabu? He was there. Mm-hmm. I mean, we got. Oh God, didn't even think of that. So <laughs> let, let us let us know, you know, on Facebook or Twitter, what what your uh, survive, what your you give some percentages, or just who you thought survived, who you thought maybe was lost in that blast, mm. and what your theories are on the finale. You know, how how was Team Avatar going to win the day? Right. Uh, again. You can always find us at Doom.com. Yep. Again, we're on Facebook and Twitter at slash Podcast of Doom. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can subscribe and rate to us on Stitcher and iTunes. Yes. And uh, make sure that you check out our main cast, uh, Podcast of Doom, at PodcastofDoom.com. We're going to be reviewing the new Hobbit movie yep. this week yeah, uh, we'll after be, it comes out. Yeah, we're reviewing it the day it comes out, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So look forward to that. We're also going to be giving our uh, year in TV review mm-hmm. on that podcast. We're going to break our our reviews into multiple episodes instead of doing it in one big one because mm. it got kind of messy last time with yeah. all the lists. <laughs> so this week we're going to review and give our favorite TV shows of the year and then also mm. our review of The Hobbit. Right. So look forward to seeing you all over on that side. Yes, sir. And until the finale for Legend of Korra, spoilers! <laughs> See you guys later. Massive spoilers. Yeah.